Okay, just as we've seen before, resistors can be combined together in series parallel combinations. Capacitors can be combined, although the forms of the equations are reversed compared to resistors. What about inductors? Well, let's look at those. Let's look at the math. Let's first consider inductors in series. How do they combine? So just as we did before, we're going to assume we have n inductors in series. So L1, L2, L3, all the way to L sub n. Each inductor will have its own voltage across it. But they're all going to have the same current because, of course, they are all connected in series. And so every inductor has the same I and the same di dt for each inductor. And so just as we did before, we're going to use KVL. Let's consider the voltage across that entire array. By KVL, what we're going to get is that V is just equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 all the way to V sub n, which will just be equal to L1 di dt plus L2 di dt plus L3 di dt all the way to L sub n times DITT. Again, we can go and factor out the common term DITT. This is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 all the way to L sub n times DITT. So that's the voltage across our entire inductor array. And of course, if you want to replace this with a single equivalent inductor with the same current and the same voltage, then V will be equal to L equivalent times di dt. And obviously for this to be equal to that, then this expression must be equal to LEQ for those two equations to be equivalent. And therefore, LEQ is just going to be equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 all the way to L sub n. In other words, inductors in series add together. And they add just like resistors do. So the same idea, connect them in series, sum them together. So the same sort of behavior as opposed to capacitors which are opposite. What about inductors in parallel? Let's once again assume we have n inductors, except now they're all connected together in parallel. So in this case, I've got the same voltage across every inductor. So, same voltage and, of course, the same integral of voltage as well. And in this case, I'll have different currents, I1, I2, I3, 
all the way to I sub n. KCL tells me that I must be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 all the way to I sub n. And once again, we can now go through and substitute the equation for the integral of the voltage, or the, the integral of the voltage is equal to the current of the capacitor, or pardon me, for the inductor. I'm sorry. And if we do that, what we will get is that I is equal to 1 over L1, integral from T naught to T of V tau D tau plus the initial condition of I1 at time t equals 0, plus 1 over L2 integral from T naught to T of V tau D tau plus I2 T naught all the way to 1 over L sub n integral from T naught to T of V tau D tau plus I n T naught. And of course I can now combine together common terms. We note that I at T naught must be equal to the sums of the initial conditions. So it's going to be equal to I1 T naught plus I2 T naught all the way to I sub n T naught. So if I take common terms what I'm going to get is that I is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 all the way to 1 over L sub n multiplied times the integral of T naught to T times V tau D tau plus I at T naught once I make all the substitutions. And again I want to turn this into a single equivalent inductor like so, which means if I have the same voltage and the same current, then I expect that I will be equal to 1 over LEQ integral from T naught to T of V tau D tau plus the initial condition I at T naught. Well clearly if this equation and this equation are going to be identical, then the only way for that to happen is if this is equal to this. And therefore, LEQ must be therefore equal to 1 over 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 all the way to 1 over L sub n for inductors in parallel. And so what we find is inductors in parallel combine the same way that resistors in parallel combine. So same form of the equations. In this case L equivalent is equal to 1 over the sum of the inverses. So inductors and resistors have the same form when they combine. Capacitors are opposite and that's kind of an interesting result. We'll talk a little bit later about you know kind of a sort of a, a more of a qualitative viewpoint about why that is true. Why they seem to do these things oppositely. I'll try to I'll, I'll try to give you kind of a better mental picture of that. So we'll, we'll see that a little bit later. Now of course once you know how to use these equations, inductors in series and parallel, they are going to work just like resistors. And we can do a simple example like that. So as an example, what if we have this?
I want to find the equivalent inductance between these two terminals. This is one millihenry. This is four millihenries. This is four millihenries. And so in this case, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Look for series parallel combinations. Clearly, these two inductors are in parallel. So in this case, four millihenries in parallel with four millihenries is just going to be equal to four times 10 to the third times four times 10 to the, pardon me, four times 10 to the minus third times four times 10 to the minus third divided by eight times 10 to the minus third and that will be two millihenries. No surprise there. So these combine together into a single inductor and therefore once those combine I now have this. So I've got two millihenries, one millihenry. These are clearly in series. I add them together and then what I get is three millihenries. And that is my equivalent inductance. So in this case, you're doing this in a step-by-step -step manner exactly like you would do if it were resistors. You're just doing, doing in henrys instead of doing it in ohms. All right. So we've looked at inductors and capacitors both. We have seen how the, how they have a, a duality as far as the mathematical equations that describe them. We've basically looked at their basic characteristics. Now let's look at how we need to use them in circuit analysis. What are the things we need to look for? And can we use the same properties and laws that we have used so far to analyze circuits with resistors and also apply those to capacitors and inductors? Well, we'll look at that next time.